Imagine living with a monster under your bed. But the monster never reveals itself. It just stays hidden down there. That's what it's like for an estimated 85% of people who live with herpes but will never experience any symptoms. But for the remaining 15%, the monster is out. Somebody like myself who had a very severe case of it, it wasn't just one little sore. For, I'd say 20, 25 years, I've been getting outbreaks off and on, sometimes two, sometimes three times a month. Rich Mancuso knows all about that. It, it affects everything that you do. It affects sleeping, it affects walking. But he knows about something else too, a potential cure, a vaccine, which he received. Once you finish the entire process, I mean, where are you now? I haven't had anything for five months. So you went from two to four a month. You haven't had anything in five months. Yeah. What's that like? Do you feel like you've gotten your life back? I mean, dating, sleeping, walking, like you said, every aspect of your life changes. Oh, everything changed. Everything changed. My complete outlook on life had changed. Theravax is the herpes vaccine giving millions of sufferers new hope. Possible breakthrough for the millions of people in America who suffer with herpes outbreaks. An experimental vaccine is proving to be extremely effective at reducing or even eliminating these painful outbreaks. Dr. Halford created it after decades of research. Creep. Herpes does creep. It creeps along. It's, a, it's sort of like a stealth fire fighter flying below the radar of the immune system. It creeps along. You know, and that's what it wants to do. The immune system engages it, but kind of only in an after-the-fact fashion. For someone that's having an actual herpes reactivation event that's going to lead to an outbreak, at any point in time, maybe there's a thousand or ten thousand units of infectious virus spread out through a bunch of cells creeping through the body. When we give that shot of vaccine, there's about a hundred million infectious units of virus. And it's a very different situation where we're putting this right in the skin of the epithelium of the calf. It induces a nice red inflammatory response within a day or two. There's all these viral proteins. And in that context, there's no way for the immune system to mistake, maybe I should respond to this. It does respond to it. This vaccine sounds like a miracle cure, like a miracle vaccine. Is that what it is? It is. It really is. And you say that and I get goosebumps because this is Dr. Halford. It's a quarter century of his life. And he, he figured this out. This dude put in his life. So yeah, it is a miracle cure. It is, it is a miracle treatment. It, and, it, and it will eradicate the virus. It really will. Augustin Fernandez is the CEO of Rational Vaccines the company behind Theravax. And I started calling patients that, you know, people that he had treated and they were like, yeah, I'm in remission. Yeah, I don't have outbreaks anymore. Well, yeah, I used to have 24 outbreaks, now I only have one. Like, it was just amazing. And that's when I said, we have to do a company. And what were the findings from your testing? What did you guys discover? About 65% of the people go into remission with the first three shots. Everybody gets a little better or a lot better. And the people who continue to have outbreaks, even though they're better, but are still with boosters, it, it really pushes the, the, the virus in, into control, right? So to be clear with you and, and whoever's watching is uh, our vaccine doesn't do anything to the virus. You understand? It's not like it's a miracle cure that goes in there and kills the virus. That's not what happens. What the vaccine does is it teaches your immune system to control the virus. So if you've had chickenpox as a kid, which you may or may not have had, depending on how young you are, because really young kids don't have it, they have the vaccine now, right? But if you've had chickenpox, you always have chickenpox. But chickenpox doesn't have the ability to fool your immune system like HSV1 and HSV2 do. So your body controls it. You have the thing, your body controls it, you're fine. You're not giving anybody chickenpox. Our vaccine makes it, the treatment course, so that your body can handle H2 and H2 the same way it handles chickenpox, and you can control it. What has the FDA response been? There's been no response. There's a real famous quote. First they ignore you, then they laugh at you, then they fight you, and then you win. So I'm hoping somebody starts laughing at me soon, because up to now they, they've just sort of been ignoring us. And it's sad because ignoring us really is ignoring the patients, you know? Now, when you say, so when you say ignoring, if you filed um, 
a, a, an application, I guess, I don't even know how it works, but if you did, they won't ignore that, right? I don't think they will. I think they'll, they'll earnestly look at it, but they, again, we have to do our part too, right? We have to file, we have to, but it, it costs so much money to do that, it takes so much time, and we had a choice to make, right? Is it like, do we not do this at all because we don't have the money? Do we wait 10 years before somebody lets us do a trial while someone like Rich Mancuso is suicidal? Or do we go to a more pro pro progressive jurisdiction and help people? Because they're all people. Just because they don't live under the FDA jurisdiction doesn't mean they're not people. Um, so we are going to file something with the FDA, and we just need to get our money together, and we need to get our time right, and we need to navigate sort of that landscape and give them what they want. I don't want the FDA to go away. I want to be able to work with a regulatory body that helps keep people safe. I just wish it wasn't so out of reach for startups. And we're talking millions of dollars this cost to get it through the FDA, right? 50 million, 100 million. Getting a drug approved by the FDA can cost millions of dollars. Luckily for this startup, they had a believer in billionaire Peter Thiel. And you recently had the interest and investment from billionaire Peter Thiel. Has that progressed at all, the work that you guys are doing? I think that, yeah, that's one of the most amazing things that have happened. Um, you know, clearly as a businessman, somebody like Peter you respect very much. So just the fact that he's, he took notice of our work, Phil's work really, and, and agrees with our approach, it, it validates the science and the sort of business. But of course the money's gonna help, you know? The money's gonna help because that's, that's what makes the world go around. The truth is there was a lot of people that wanna give us money and I should mention there's another group out of Chicago called Iron Bridge that's been super supportive, just as much money. Uh, and we get calls all the time with people with money. But it, it, finding a partner in Teal Capital and Jason Cam, who's the chief medical officer at Teal Capital, and the people at Iron Bridge, who understand the public need for this and who understand that, hey, I'm not investing in a business to go make billions. And, you know, look, if this, if this eradicates herpes, Dr. Halford's family deserves $100 billion, right? Well, I'm a businessman and I understand the value of it. But I don't think anybody, including Teal, who's investing in us is doing it to make money. I think they understand the public need. And I'm blessed to have investors that understand that. And the results? Let's go back to Rich. What, so walk me through what happened after every shot, because it is three shots, three months apart, I think. Yes. So, yeah. I mean, after the first shot, were you, were you clear of everything? No, no. For for somebody like myself, the, the, the first, second, and third shot were learning experiences for my immune system. Since my immune system didn't really have a handle on it when I first got exposed 20-something years ago, it never knew what it was. So after the first shot, I went, I think, uh, a, a week or two, and then I had an outbreak. And then the second shot, I went a week or two and then had another outbreak and then another one. But the thing to notice about these particular outbreaks is that they were smaller in size and they didn't last as long in duration. So I noticed immediately I was getting a difference. But again, you know, my, my body had to learn how to, how to handle it all over again. Had going five months with never having an outbreak had inspired me to actually come out publicly and start talking about it because I felt that people needed to know about this. How could I look at my friends and people who suffer that I've known for years and keep this a secret? And not let them know that there actually is hope and that they're actually working on it. But now speaking of conversation, you, 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 know, you were in this community, like you said, for so long, right? These, um, I guess, forums and threads where you, where you guys talk about what issues you're going through, what helped you. When, you. when you go on there and you tell these people who are suffering the way you were, and you tell them, hey, there's a vaccine, it can help you, it helped me. What is the reaction? <laughs> it was, um, I would say it was a 50-50 reaction. I'd say half the people were, um, you're full of crap. And then the other half of the people were kind of like, this could be something. Please tell me more. Do you have any links? Do you have any information? So 
I understand skepticism, and I, and I do understand where these people that didn't like the idea, where, where they were coming from, because I was the same person. I was that person for 20-something years of hearing snake oil, try this, try this vitamin, try this thing, you know, order this $600 three-pack mineral thing from England and it'll cure you. I, I hate to admit it, but I spent the $600. I had to try... You know, look at where I was. I had to try every single thing. So, you know, for for these people to say that I was full of crap, I kind of understood where they were coming from. It was kind of hard to say, no, it's it's not. <laughs> this is real. I went there. Here's the pictures. Like, here's Dr. Halford's webpage. Here's the studies. As of right now, the FDA has not yet approved the Theravax vaccine for sale in the United States. Do you ever worry about the side effects or of what might happen 10 years from now that we don't yet know? I'm pretty confident. The way, the way that it was um, explained to me from more than one scientist, I do understand why some scientists on the other side are saying, oh, well, you know, what if it replicates and mutates? And well, this, this is not just a vaccine, it's a live attenuated vaccine. So it's essentially a dumbed-down version of herpes. You're, you're being injected with an almost dead virus. It's not, it doesn't have any adjuvants. It doesn't have mercury. It doesn't have all this other crap in it. It's a dumbed-down version of an almost dead vaccine. And you're, you're essentially slowing down. This vaccine is a slowed-down version. It's, it's, it can't replicate. It can't reinfect. It can't do any of those things. Dr. Luisa Velos was a consulting physician on the vaccine's trials. When you began working with Dr. Halford, you were surprised that you didn't see a lot of this information about HSV in the medical books, right? Yes, that's right. I was surprised that the patients came with this symptom. They were explaining things that I didn't see in the textbooks. I went over and over again on my books, uh, online, uh, research and all that. And it was nothing. It was nothing. It's either you are asymptomatic or mean that you have no symptoms at all, or you have one or three outbreaks per year, or you are a complicated case. So where are these patients fit? How can I label them? I mean, I cannot put a category there because it's, it doesn't exist. So far, I've interviewed and seen more than 30 patients that they share actually exact the same thing they all have this thing that doesn't get to be categorized or labeled in the books it's just the hb2 infection acting up in their body and triggering all this symptom that goes from gastrointestinal symptoms to urinary tract infections to um, neuropathic pain or any other neuropathic type of conditions that they will show and those kind of things you don't really see it in the textbooks yeah it was very interesting for me it was like i'm um, going up as a physician Jonathan Zenelman called the trial unethical because they weren't overseen by an institutional review board. I reached out for a comment but haven't heard back yet. What would you say to the people who are afraid of the fact that this is a live, attenuated vaccine? And of course, attenuated meaning that it's a weakened version of the virus. Um, is it safe? Well, yes, it's safe because first we did the trial, but before that, Dr. Alford, he was giving the vaccine to a lot of people before, people that they had the HIV, they knew what he was doing, they believe in his work, and they actually volunteered and said like, okay, I, I want to be part of it, I, I, I wanted to try it on me. And besides that, the whole medical team and all the persons close to help for, including his family, including my family, uh, we got the vaccine as a, you know, a prevention for HIV. Too. We wanted to make sure that it was safe for people, that, you know, it will not cause any harm. And of course, it's only understandable that someone will be worried because it's something relatively new. But I mean, nobody gets measles because you get the vaccination for measles or chicken pox or um, vaccination. Or you don't get tetanus when you get your boosters for a toxoid, right? So this is something that has been done before in science, in medical the medical field. We have always um, been uh, working with light vaccinated virus. I have to tell you, Frankie, it was a success. I mean, it was so nice. It was so uh, wide opening because 
uh, we didn't know we were gonna get so much information. We didn't know that it was gonna work so well. Dr. Halford died in 2017 after his battle with cancer. It's called cytonasal undifferentiated carcinoma. The five-year survival times are not inspiring. The guy worked till the last day. I have a paper that he signed and he sent to me two days before he passed. He had a, his brain was hemorrhaging from a, from a tumor. And he would bleed out his nose all the time. Bleed out his nose. And he was just constantly wiping his nose, plugging it so he could keep working. He was in the lab and he signed some papers to me and I saw the blood stains on like two blood drops on the paper. And he FedExed them to me and I got him after he passed and I'm like, that's real. Like the dude was in there bleeding from his brain, writing shit. And you can see the, I got the, the blood on the pages that he sent to me. Before his passing, Dr. Halford said he wanted to make sure the vaccine was available to the world with or without him. August and rational vaccines will succeed with or without me. And that's really been my goal was just to get those guys to the point where they don't need me. What was Dr. Halford's hope? Like, what did he tell you his hope was before he passed away? His hope, to the very end, was that this would move forward and that this would do what, it, what, what he knows it can do, what he knew it could do, it will do for, for humanity. Which This virus doesn't have to exist. We can treat people who are suffering and make them feel better, but there's an even grander thing, which is like, your kids never have to think about herpes. You understand what I'm saying? It's like your kids could get a shot and be like, what's that, Grandpa? That was his hope. His hope, to put the monster back under the bed for good.